a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. In the future, you will be able to save and re replay memories. Essentially, if, if you have a whole brain interface, everything that's encoded in memory, you could, you could upload. You could basically store your memories as a backup. And ultimately, you could potentially download them into a new body or into a robot body. I'm confident that long term, it will be possible to restore somebody's full body motion. One day in the future, there's going to come a time where you can read each other's mind. The future is going to be weird. It's called The Link, and he says that one day it could cure everything from paralysis to blindness. Our goal is to solve important spine and brain problems. Our brains are made up of billions of neurons, cells with long spindly arms that send messages via electrical spikes. Those spikes in electricity travel between neurons in a chain reaction, sending messages to the parts of our brain that control speech or movement, for example. According to Neuralink, your brain cells are kind of like electrical wiring, and rather than just having neurons sending electrical signals, those signals could be sent and received by a chip. Elon Musk unveiled Neuralink's implantable brain chip, the Link version 0.9. Current prototype version 0.9 has about a thousand channels, uh, so that's you know, about a hundred times better than the, the next best consumer device that's available. And it's a 23 millimeters by 8 millimeters. It goes flush with your skull, it's invisible, and all you can see afterwards is there's a tiny scar. And if it's under your hair, you can't see it at all. In fact, I could have a Neuralink right now, and you wouldn't know. It's a brain-computer interface designed to be implanted directly into the brain by a surgical robot. Same-day surgery without a big incision or general anesthesia. The Link procedure, the, the installation of a Link, done in under an hour. Um, so you can basically go in in the morning and leave the hospital in the afternoon. And it can be done without general anesthesia. You remove uh, about a coin-sized piece of skull, and, uh, and then you can just walk around right, after, right afterwards. It's pretty cool. The implant is kind of like this little puck of the secret sauce active electronics, and the electrodes are these tiny little flexible threads that each, at the very end, have multiple little electrodes that if you get those electrodes next to a neuron, they can record what that neuron is doing. The chip plugs into your brain directly via tiny microscopic threads. They're about 1 20th of the width of a human hair. And those tiny little flexible hairs are too small for a human to handle, even like with tweezers. And they connect with the neurons in your brain to receive and send electrical signals. Importantly, Neuralink says these electrodes won't damage your brain. If they're inserted very carefully, so that the robot actually images the brain and makes sure to avoid any veins or arteries so that the electrodes can be inserted um, with no noticeable damage. You sort of think like if you stab something with a wire, surely it will bleed, but actually at a, at a really small scale, it does not. It has an all-day battery life, wireless charging, and it's designed to wirelessly connect to your phone via Bluetooth with a range of 5 to 10 meters. And the whole thing, the chip, the surgery, the full cyborg experience, will start off expensive, but Musk says it'll hopefully eventually only cost a couple of thousand dollars. He wants it to be about as expensive as laser eye surgery. Over time, we want to get the, the cost um, obviously down as low as possible, um, but I think um, I inclusive of the automated surgery, I think we want to get the, 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 the price down to a few thousand dollars, something like that. Um, and I, I think that's possible. I think it should be possible to get it similar to um, LASIK. Elon Musk did a demo and brought out three live pigs, one without a brain implant, one who'd had a link implanted and then had it removed without any issues, and a third pig named Gertrude that had had a chip in for two months. We got to see a live reading of the neurons in the pig's brain firing in real time, specifically the neurons that were sending and receiving messages from her snout. Um, so what you're, the, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in Gertrude's head. So this neural link connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout. So whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. We also saw the chip predicting the pig's movements based on brain activity. And we saw the electrodes firing and stimulating neurons and lighting up different brain regions. Um, and we uh, take the, the readings from the neurons and we try to predict the position of the joints. Um, and so we say we have the predicted position of the joints 
and then we, we measure the actual position of the joints, you can see that they're almost exactly aligned. So we're able with um, a wireless neural, imp neural implant to actually predict the position of, of all of the limbs uh, in the pig's body uh, with, with very high accuracy. Neuralink's head neurosurgeon, Matthew McDougall, said the first trials of the link would be aimed at treating things like paraplegia. So our, our first clinical trial is aimed at uh, people with paraplegia or, or tetraplegia, uh, so cervical spinal cord injury. We're going to enroll, uh, we're planning to enroll a small number of patients uh, to make sure the device is safe and that it works in that case. There was talk of curing blindness by implanting the link in the visual cortex, treating mental health conditions like depression, anxiety and addiction, and connecting your brain and uploading it into a robot. Essentially, if, if you have a whole brain interface, everything that's encoded in memory, you could, you could upload. You could basically store your memories as a backup. In the future, you will be able to save and re replay memories, and ultimately, you could potentially download them into a new body or into a robot body. I'm confident that long term it will be possible to restore somebody's full body motion. The future is going to be weird.